Luke the physician, one of Paul's companions on his missionary journeys, and the author of the book of Luke and the book of Acts, writes in Acts 16, We traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When we came to the border of Mysia, we entered into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow us to. So we passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. The city was founded in 346, uh, about 346 BC. And then a couple of years later, Philip of Macedon, uh, Alexander's father, he saw it and he said, oh, this is a nice place. And he came over and took it, out, took it over and named it after himself. And then uh, about 300 years after that, there was a massive battle fought over here at this, that's one of the turning points in Roman history. And uh, you, it, it involves Anthony and Cleopatra and Octavian, and it's really richly dramatic. And it took place just outside those walls on the plain that's over there. And uh, it's a fascinating bit of history. And that's where Paul stepped into this he stepped into the history of this city in a way that all of those wars, all of those weapons, all of those soldiers, all of the emperors never had the least effect compared to what Paul's message, how it transformed Europe, how it transformed life, how it transformed the millennia. Fascinating history. It had been Paul's practice all during his travels throughout uh, Asia Minor to find a synagogue and he would go preach in the synagogue. When he came to Philippi there was no synagogue so he and his traveling companions came to this place, this river, just outside the walls of Philippi and I'm looking at them, the walls right now. And this is where they came to uh, worship and when they did they found a woman named Lydia and her companions who were sitting here probably their custom was to do their laundry and uh, Lydia was apparently fairly wealthy businesswoman she dealt in what was called purple purple dye and purple dye comes from a particular crustacean that's only found in a certain place and makes it so valuable and she apparently had a good business in in the selling purple dye anyway so Paul said well this will be our congregation. So he preached the gospel to these women and they expressed deep interest and they listened carefully and ultimately they became the foundation for the church in Philippi. So I was thinking, you know, what, what would be an appropriate song to sing here? And I know the, the audio uh, is imperfect because you can hear the sound of the water in the background, but for this song it works perfectly. It's a song I wrote a long time ago. But I can't think of anything more apropos for this time in this place. Take me down to the river Let it walk Show me what it's like to be clean And I will be born again Take me down to the river Let it wash over me Show me what it's like to be clean I will be born again For I am a sinner and I confess I'm truly lost forever unless You take me down to the river Let it wash over me Show me what it's
it's like to be clean and I will be born again Oh, sweet water flow rivers of peace into my soul Oh, sweet water flow rivers of peace into my soul Oh, sweet water sweet water clean me free me take me make me new for I am a sinner and I confess I'm truly lost forever unless you take me down to the river let it wash over me show me what it's like to be clean and i will be born again and i will be born again And this is where Paul came. Now with him were Luke and Silas, and they all came down here, down the Rue, Rue Ignatia, the, that I just showed you, the Via Ignatia, which is one of the Roman roads. So this is, this is the scene that uh, greeted them when they arrived. And this is the ruins of Philippi, and this area here, from here down to that ridge, is the, the Forum. And this is where most of the business of the day would have been conducted. It was the commercial center. It was where the business people met. Actually, it was lined with shops all around it. So this is where people bought, uh, bought and sold. Uh, and it was also where sort of the first level of commercial enterprise was entered into. People would meet in the marketplace and say, oh, I've got, uh, you know, I've got so much sheep's wool, I'll exchange that for olive oil or whatever. Then they would go to an area called the Agora, which is a smaller area, just the other side of those two pillars in the middle. And that's where they would finalize their negotiations. And it was a much smaller area, much more intimate area. And it's probably where they they drink whatever the drink of the day was. They didn't have tea or coffee, so I don't know what it was, but wine, mulled wine or worn wine or something. But anyway, this this is this is Philippi. And this is where Paul and Silas and Luke brought the message of the gospel. This was the first place that they, in Europe, that they preached the gospel. And to do so, they would have stood right here in this place. You see the, the upright stones over there, and then these upright stones, they had a platform on top of them. And in those days, uh, a town crier or the news crier, people would come in with a new message or something to sell or something to say. They would come over here and they would stand right there and they would proclaim their message to everybody who was out in the forum. And the interested people in the forum would come and gather around right here and they'd listen to what he had to say. That's what happened when Paul came and he preached the gospel from this point and the people gathered around and there were among them a number of people who expressed an interest and they wanted to hear more. Eventually enough people, they gathered enough people to, to, to start a church eventually here in Philippi. But this is also where the, the fortune teller, the girl, the young girl who was the fortune teller, and she provided the income for, for a number of people here. And she kept following uh, Paul and Silas around and, and making a nuisance of herself as far as everybody else was concerned, saying, these people are, this man is from God, he's got a message from God. And, and the people who were in, <laughs> who were making money from her, actually they were like pimps, they were making money from her ability to prophesy.
And Paul finally got just got fed up with it and he said, come out of her. And he commanded the, the spirit of divination to come out of that girl. All of a sudden she, she had lost her gift. All of a sudden the people who were her pimping her lost their income, lost their revenue from her. And they were the ones who got mad at Paul and had him dragged before the magistrate, the authorities, over in the Agora. And that is why it's not because of the message of the gospel that Paul was preaching. Preaching, He had a lot of people who were interested and wanted to hear more. And it was pretty benign as far as they were concerned. But it was the fact that he had deprived these merchants, so-called merchants, of their livelihood. That is why they were dragged before the authorities. And that is why they were beaten. And that is why they were put in prison. And it's interesting, people say, well, how come Timothy and, uh, and Luke were not beaten and put in prison? Well, they weren't put in prison because they were Roman citizens. They were Gentiles. They weren't Jews. And it was, you may remember, when Paul declared himself a Roman citizen, not merely a Jew, but a Roman citizen, all of a sudden, that's when things hit the fan. Uh, and the magistrates realized what they had done. And, Oh my, uh, we, we beat this person and put him in jail and he is a Roman citizen and that is against the law. So basically they said, let pack up and leave and just, <laughs> just be nice. But as a result of what happened here, this is where the church at Philippi took shape. And when it, when it first came into being, this was the first church in Europe. And Paul's letter to the Philippians was written, uh, some time later, but he had in his mind and in his heart the people that he, who had responded to the message that he spoke from this spot. And, and that humble beginning, or those humble beginnings, that proclamation, that faithful proclamation from this point is what resulted in Europe, all of Europe, becoming Christianized and ultimately all of the West becoming Christianized and all of America and all of South America becoming Christianized and all of the world becoming Christianized because of Paul's faithfulness to declare the message, to declare the gospel from this point. And when you consider all of the hardships that he went through, all, of, all he and his companions, he didn't suffer alone, but when you consider what they went through and how faithful they were, and because of their faithfulness, the mighty, mighty work that the Holy Spirit was able to do in conquering all of Europe without a weapon. The only weapon was the Word of God. And all of the, all of the gods that inhabited Europe until that time, within a few years, had passed into oblivion because of the message of Christ, because of the faithfulness of Paul and Timothy and Silas to, and Luke to come or, or to respond to God's message. Jesus said, go. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. And in Europe, this is where that proclamation began. It's a wonderful place to be and to to know that we're walking on the stones where those men walked and we're able to share in, in despite the, the distance between us and the time between us. We can look out here and see the same thing they saw. We see the ruins of the building they, buildings they saw whole. Now all of this resulted mostly, all of these ruins resulted mostly from earthquakes. Uh, in the years after Paul left. But this is an amazing city, an amazing history. And if you don't know it, you should look into it. You say you will follow his
his footsteps Tell me do you know Where his footsteps go Rocky, Rocky In his footsteps Nowhere to call home Sacrifice pleasing in your sight. Make my heart a haven and my words and deeds. Alas, times of wonder. Teach us how to grow Here among the stones Many, many Names are called But those who will not go Never will get home Make my life a sacrifice Pleasing in your sight Make my heart a haven And my words and deeds So I was thinking what would be a good song to, to sing in, in Philippi, in this place in particular. And right now we're in the Agora, which is where uh, Paul and Silas were, were beaten. And then they were dragged over there, uh, just on the other side of the forum, and put in the prison over there. And this is the view. It's interesting because from, from the prison... Uh, if they had been able to look out of the prison, they would ultimately have been looking across the forum at the place where this church, 400 years later, was raised in honor of Paul. It's fascinating. So I, I, was, I was thinking, what's a, what's a good song to sing here, in this place, for this uh, occasion? I thought, well, given all that Paul and, and the people went through, this would be a good one. Put on your armor. Pick up your shield, put on your helmet, take your stand and do not yield. This is battle. battle, for you are marked to die. Pour down your comfort, open your eyes, here come the arrow, and you're standing dumb and blind. This is a battle. to die What you gonna do when the sky starts falling Where you gonna run when your heart gives out What's gonna happen when you pick the lasses And you're haunted by the shapes in the shadows of doubt Cut off the TV Reclaim your mind Open your Bible for oh, there's no one left behind for in this battle. This is a battle. They either fight or die. If you could look at yourself through spiritual eyes, you'd see all hell raid against you and your soul out the line. You'd see the chains and the snares everywhere you step. You'd see sights that might scare you to death. Put on your armor. Put on your armor. Pick up your sword. Defend your children. Make them warriors for the Lord, for in this battle. 
battle Either fight or die What you gonna do when the sky starts falling Where you gonna run when your heart gives out What's gonna happen when your faith collapses And you're haunted by the shapes in the shadows of doubt If you could look at your soul through spiritual eyes, you'd see all hell arrayed against you and your soul on the line. You'd see the chains and the snares everywhere you step. You'd see signs that might scare 